For TraderInsight.com, I'm Adrian Manns. We had a great day in the first hour trading pit on Friday, August 9th, 2019. Let's talk about what happened. So like I said, lots and lots of great opportunities this morning in the first hour trading pit. I want to emphasize for everybody, I am not an advocate of being a one-trick trader. Don't limit yourself to just trading the opening gaps or the apple scalps or even the around the horn trading plan. You want to get to the point where you're in sync with the markets enough that you can move from one strategy to the next and turn this from a decent living into a fantastic lifestyle. So with that said, let's go through some trades that went off this morning and talk about how they were handled and what the rationale was for some of the decisions that were made in the room. First one on the list this morning, Apple. So Apple's always my opening trade. I'm always looking to see if there's an opportunity for a scalp right in the morning on this stock. There was, of course, we had a lower band, 200 spot 26 up to 201 spot 46. That defined the entire range based on what had happened in the pre-market. Once the market got towards the open, though, you guys saw that the range of the pre-market price action was narrowing. We were going in sort of flat. So what was it that we were looking to do? I wanted to see either a bounce off that 200 spot 70 pivot or a move that gave us a little check mark entry back up above 201.46 and then up into that 202 spot 38 level that was the profit objective from last night's volatility band hierarchy. You see it there. It happened exactly with the way that we thought it would. Played out without a hitch. Didn't give us a trade right in those first few seconds of the morning. We had to wait took about a half a minute or a minute, but there it was right in front of us, and it set up the second trade very nicely. That's because we saw these lows aggregating right about there at uh, 201 spot, I think it was 84 that I called in the room, and that showed us where we were looking for an inflection on another long side entry, and of course that was exactly what happened. We got a move down in that reverted up 201.84 from 201.46. That was the second trade on Apple for the morning. And then it got down into this pivot, and the only other trade that I called was the bounce after this big bar down to the pivot. We got the inflection, got us from 200 spot 70 up to 201 spot 46 for a beautiful exit, and we were done with Apple for the day. Next trade on the list, Baltimore Chop 2SD opening gap trade in Yelp. Now, I'm going to emphasize again, I don't think you should focus on just this trade as the core of your trading business. That's because the Baltimore Chop is very, very lucrative during earnings season, and that gives you about 12 weeks a year that uh, you can lean on this thing pretty heavy. After that, or before those earnings sessions, things can get a little thinner and it can get to be kind of a tricky trade. But today was picture perfect. You see here that we had an open on Yelp that took the stock up two standard deviations, wide spreads first thing in the morning. So I was focused on whether or not that stock was going to come together and play nice, and it sure did. It got up to a level here at $39.27. That gave us an aggressive entry. This was an early entry on that stock, 39.27. That was based on the way the stock was reacting to that high, as well as some volume on the NYSE open book. When it came down, and made its move back down into this, uh, uh, the close of the first bar of trading, I did tell everybody I'm going to take my profit there and then look for the standard entry, the textbook entry from the trading course that you all took. This is a very nice uh, move down through the 3861 level on that 123 pullback that we were looking for. Stock broke down through, got into $37.33. That was our target. So we had a 38.61 entry, 37.33 target, and then as you know, Rick was trying to get the extension down here to this 36.43 uh, pivot line, wound up making it 50% of that distance, came back up, got him out at the initial profit target one way or another. It turned out to be a beautiful trade in Yelp. Fastball XRVs this morning. We had some difficult fills right on the open, but if you worked the book, if you worked your orders, you managed to get filled, even if you were only partialed on one of them. But the uh, second one on the list, NTRA, this was a real easy trade. The first bar of trading might have skipped you with that 32 level as your threshold. 
it wound up trading way up above very hard to get that fill but then look what happened it came back down and did exactly what they normally do came back in after that first five minutes got down below our trigger price once the stock triggered we had a move that got us easily up to our profit objective at thirty three dollars per share so this one happened over the course of the day this is what i'm talking about when i say you want to do some set it and forget it stuff i was out for a hike i then went to the beach and when I came home, my money was waiting for me. How did I do this? The initial order was placed as a, uh, as a standard entry. Once the trigger happened, I put an OCO order on this. I had a stop that was in place right after the trade started down below this range from uh, yesterday's trading session. And uh, that managed to capture what happened this morning as well. So I was real happy with my stop being down right just below here. $31.43 or so, and then once it started moving, it was hands off, and uh, I had my bracket order in place, 31.43 stop, 33 target. As I said, came back, count the money. Finally, from the stocks to watch portion of the Around the Horn trading plan, somebody had a question this morning about what differentiates an around the horn trade, a stocks to watch trade, and a radar selection. So generally speaking, the stocks to watch are just as valid as the around the horn setups in terms of putting the trade together. It's just we want to validate the stop loss level uh, in the morning before we wind up taking the trade. So when we saw this morning that the high of the morning's trading did not violate our stop, we knew that this was a trade that we were going to go ahead and release uh, for a fill. So once it was released for election, this one came down, traded down through the 3504 entry price. It got down to 3478 in a hurry. That's 50% of the distance to the target at that point, just like the around the horn trades, move the stop to break even. And then when it got down 10 cents to the target, move the stop down to that 50% to target level, and you're locking in some profitability. So it's a straight up money management trade. All these things represent workflow. So all you need to get used to doing with all the trading setups that we look at is sweeping orders from one part of your work to another. Once the Apple trades are off and running, you can focus on the uh, Baltimore chops. Once the Baltimore chops are, are set up and good to go, Right, you're only looking at those bars every five minutes or so to see whether or not you've got an entry in place or not. Then you can focus on your XRV setups and your XRV setups were already on autopilot from the night before because we preload those just the same way that we do the around the horn and uh, um, the stocks to watch. So all of this stuff makes for a trading business as opposed to you're good at just one trade. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email, adrian at traderinsight.com. I hope you had a great trading day on Friday and an even better one on deck for Monday. It's the best trader education anywhere, only from traderinsight.com.